من أفضل يعني أول 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 جمعية يا شيخ أول جمعية في العالم للصم سلفية الله أكبر شيخنا البث مباشر الآن والله يلا بسم الله نبدأ إيه بسم الله تبدأون إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد ففي ليلة اليوم السابع عشر من شهر رمضان لعام خمس واربعين واربعمائة وألف من هجرة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ألتقيكم في كلمة بعنوان صوم الجوارح وكانت هذه الكلمة بتنسيق من الشيخ الفاضل محمد المالكي أسأل الله أن يجعلنا وإياكم وإياه متعاونين على البر والتقوى وأن يهدينا إلى الصراط المستقيم وأن يعاملنا برحمة أرحم الراحمين نعم أثابكم الله وبارك فيكم شيخنا Indeed all praises are due to Allah We praise him We seek his help We seek his forgiveness We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves And the wickedness of our deeds Whosoever Allah the Most High guides There are none to misguide And whomsoever Allah the Most High leads, uh, leads astray There is none to guide I testify that there is no deity worthy of worship in truth Except for Allah alone Having no partners, and that Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is his servant and messenger. To proceed, then we, on this night of the 17th of Ramadan, the year of 1445, after the hijrah of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, we, are, we praise Allah that we are going to deliver a word about the fasting of the limbs. And this was a topic that was cho- chosen by the Shaykh Muhammad al-Maliki. May Allah Azza wa give him success. And we ask Allah the Most High to guide us <coughs> through the straight path. Naam, Shaykhan. Al-Sawm fi al-Asl min jihat al-Lughat al-Arabiyya ma'khud min al-Imsak. Hada asl al-Sawm. Wal-ma'na al-Shar'i umsakun an mufattirat al-Shar'iyya. Faman amsaka an hadhi al-mufattirat al-Shar'iyya faqad sa'am. No. So fasting in its root, its linguistic meaning is to withhold. And the technical meaning of it is to withhold from the things that break one's fast in the eyes of the Islamic legislation. So whosoever does this, their ruling is that they have fulfilled the duties and they are a fasting person. Well, so, well, so, قسمان الأول صوم واجب وهو صوم رمضان وصوم النذر بأن يوجب الإنسان عن أن يلزم الإنسان نفسه بصوم وهو صوم النذر والقسم الثاني الصوم النفل والتطوع نعم and when we look at fasting we find that fasting is of two types the first of those types is that it is, it is obligatory, like the fasting of the month of Ramadan. And also, which is also obligatory, is the fasting of the, um, the fasting that is made obligatory upon the individual makes it obligatory upon themselves. So i.e. they say that if such and such happens, uh, I will fast. And then that such and such happens, so then it becomes obligatory for them to fast. And the second is the fasting that is optional or that is um, simply voluntary. Naam, Shaykhana. Fa'abakumullah. والأصل في وجوب الصوم والأصل في وجوب الصوم رمضان قوله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون أيام المعدودات نعم أفضل شيخنا تفضلوا تفضلوا شيخنا لا لا أيام معدودات فمن شاهد منكم الشرف ليصوم نعم and the 
evidence for fasting is the statement of Allah the Most High, that which means, O oh, you who have believed, fasting has been prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon those who came before you. Um, a number of days, so whomsoever from you sees the month come in, then let them fast. Naam, Shaykhana. قال الله عز وجل أيام معدودات فالصوم وصفه الله وصف أيام الصوم بأنها معدودات ومن جهة اللغة معدودات جمع مؤنث سالم وهو عند كثير من أهل اللغة جمع قلة فهي صيام أيام قلائل نعم and here Allah the Most High says Ayam and Ma'adudat, like a number of days. And here the word Ma'adudat, it's what's known in the Arabic language as the Jam Mu'annath Salim, the plural that is feminine and it's regular. So it's these three things. And when it's been used like this in this sentence, it actually, although it's a plural, it gives the meaning of uh, like just, just a few. Uh, so it means uh, it means that it's only a few days that are obligatory for the individual. Fabricum la shaykhna. No. وَثَبَتَ فِي الْبُخَارِ وَسْلِمَ عَنِ بْنِ عُمَرَ أَنَّ النَّبِيَّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَالْ بُنِيَ الْإِسْلَامُ عَلَى خَمْسٍ شَهَادَةِ أَنْ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهُ وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَصَوْمِ رَمَضَانِ and it's been reported by Imams Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Ibn Umar. May Allah be pleased with him and his father. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said that Islam has been built upon five, i.e. five pillars. The testification that there is no deity worthy of worship and truth except for Allah. And that Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is his servant and messenger. And also the, the pillars that the Muslims must establish the prayer and then that the Muslims must fast. Naam Shaykhna, Fabakum Allah. Muhaqiqat al-Sawmi Muhaqiqat al-Sawmi Imsakun an mubahat fi al-sanati kulliha kal-akul wal-shurb wa jima' al-rajul zawjahu ila akhiri And the reality of fasting is that the individual withholds from things that are permissible for them. They're permissible for them in, or over the duration of the year. So eating, drinking, lawful sexual relations with the wife. These are things that are all permissible throughout Ramadan. Uh, sorry, outside of Ramadan. But during the month of Ramadan, the individual withholds and abstains from them. Barakallahu <laughs> والله يحب هذا الصوم حبا شديدا بدليل ما ثبت في البخاري ومسلم عن أبي هريرة أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الصوم جنة ومعنى جنة أي ستر من النار نعم and this act of worship this withholding this fasting it's beloved intensely by Allah the Most High and the evidence for this is that which has been reported in the hadith collected by Bukhari and Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim may Allah have mercy upon them from the hadith of Abu Huraira where the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him said that indeed fasting is a shield i.e. it's a shield against the fire <laughs> يدع طعامه وشرابه وشهوته من أجلي كل ابن عاد كل عمل ابن آدم له إلا الصوم فإنه لي وأنا أجزي به ففي هذا الحديث ما يدل على أن الله يحب الصوم حبا شديدا أولا نعم فضل أثابك من الله وبارك فيكم شيخنا then he said, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Allah the Most High said, Indeed, my slave leaves off his food and his drink and his desires for my sake. 
and indeed all of the actions of the sons of Adam are for them, except for fasting, for indeed it is for me, and I will recompense its reward. And this shows us and indicates that Allah the Most High loves fasting to a great degree. الأمر الأول أنه قال أنه جعل الصوم جنة وسترا من النار والأمر الثاني أنه بيّن أن الصائم يترك ملذاته لله وفي الله نعم أثابك الله شيخنا So this hadith it shows us a number of things Firstly that Allah the Most High has made fasting a shield and a protection from the fire for the fasting person. And secondly, that the fasting person leaves off the things that they love, the things that they find sweetness in for the sake of Allah the Most High. <laughs> الأمر الثالث قال كل عمل ابن آدم له إلا الصوم فإنه لي فإنه لي وأنا أجزي به فيا لله عمل اختص الله إجزاءه بنفسه فكيف سيكون إجزاءه نعم سبحان الله أبكم الله شيخنا the third point of benefit that's that All of the actions of the sons of Adam are for them, except for fasting. For indeed, it is for me. So this is an action that Allah the Most High, He specifies that He alone is the one who gives its reward. And glory be unto Him. What kind of reward would Allah the Most High give uh, when it's His reward? فَأَبْكُمُ الْعَشْرَةَ الْأَمْرُ الرَّابِعُ قَالَ فِي تَتْمَةِ الْحَدِيثِ لَخَلُوفُ فَمِ الصَّائِمِ أطيب عند الله من رائحة المسك الخلوف ورائحة المعدة عند خلوية من الطعام والشراب أطيب عند الله الذي لا إله إلا هو من رائحة المسك سبحان الله The fourth benefit and this benefit is in or at the end of the hadith where Allah the Most High says that which means indeed the breath Or from, that emanates from the mouth of the fasting person is better to Allah the Most High than the smell of musk. And here, the the, the breath that's highlighted here, it's the, the smell from the stomach that emanates from the empty stomach. This is better with Allah, whom there is no deity worthy of worship in truth except for Him. It's better with Him than the smell of musk. Athabakum Allah Shaykhana. هذا الصوم العظيم والذي يحبه الله للغاية حقيقته كما تقدم إمساك عن مباحات عن أكل وشرب وجماع إلى آخره فكيف إذا إذا أفسد الصوم بالمعاصي والذنوب التي تغضب الله سبحانه نعم And the reality of this fasting, as we have said, is that the individual withholds and abstains from those things that are generally permitted for them. For example, eating, drinking, and sexual relations with one's wife. So, how is it if the individual partakes in this act of worship and then ruins it by performing acts of disobedience to Allah the Most High, and also carrying out sins. And these sins and this disobedience to Allah the Most High, it decreases the level of the fasting. And then it decreases its reward. Subhanallah. And it will continue to decrease proportionate to these sins until then nothing remains of the, the, 
Ajo of the reward of the fasting, and no sign remains except the hunger and thirst that the individual feels. ثبت عند الإمام أحمد وابن ماجة عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال رب صائم ليس له من صومه إلا الجوع والعطش أعوذ بالله أعوذ بالله أعوذ بالله and it's been authentically established and collected by Imam Ahmad and Imam Ibn Majah may Allah have mercy upon them on the authority of Abu Huraira may Allah be pleased with him that the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him said it may be the case that a fasting person they achieve nothing from their fast except for hunger and thirst and we seek refuge with Allah we seek refuge with Allah we seek refuge with Allah Thabakum Allah Shaykhna وذكر شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية الإجماع على أن الذنوب والمعاصي تنقص أجر الصيام. And Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah he mentions the consensus of the scholars that sins and disobedience to Allah the Most High decreases the reward of fasting. فيا صائم يا صائم يا صائم ف او فاستنج بيرسون او فاستنج بيرسون او فاستنج بيرسون اتق الله في جوارحك في كل صباح ومساء وليل ونهار وفطر وصيام لا سيما عند الصيام سبحان الله fear allah through your limbs in the day and in the night at the times when you're fasting and at the times that you're not, fear him as relates to your limbs. And know that all of the trials, all of the issues that you have, the reason, the core reason for them, the whether they're small or they're big, the core reason for them are sins. خلاف الرجل مع امرأته بسبب الذنوب والمعاصي. The difference that a man has with his wife is due to the sins. تمرد الأولاد ذكورا وإناثا على الأبوين بسبب الذنوب والمعاصي. The sickness of the children, um, this is due to the um, the sins and the disobedience of the parents. ضيق المعيشة ونكد الحياة. Subhanallah. Uh, having a difficult life, i.e., financially, and being depressed and being down, the reason for this is all sins. أنما يريد الله أن يصيبهم ببعض ذنوبهم من تولى من الصحابة عن لقاء الأعداء هذا بسبب الذنب فلاحظوا كيف الذنب جر إلى الهزيمة وإلى التولي نعم أحبكم الله شيخنا and this is something that's well known and established and we see it in many verses of the Quran al kareem and the Shaykh mentioned a verse from the Quran and no the, the general meaning is this and if if you were to turn away in battle then know that Allah he wants that you um, or, or he, he, he wants that you are afflicted, afflicted by some of your sins وقال الله عز وجل في سبب بيان وقال الله عز وجل في بيان سبب هزيمة الصحابة في يوم أحد قال في سورة آل عمران أو لما أصابتكم مصيبة قد أصبتم مثليها قلتم أن هذا قل هو من عند أنفسكم إن الله على كل شيء قدير And Allah the Most High, He says, 
um, describing the situation of the Muslims after the um, uh, after the Battle of Uhud, the, what um, what afflicted them in Uhud, he said in the verse of Al Imran, Sheikhna al Ayah min fadlikum ma ma'adira Sheikhna. هو لما أصابتكم مصيبة قد أصبتم مثليها. قلتم أن هذا قل هو من عندي أنفسكم إن الله على كل شيء قدير. أثابك الله. Say that calamity has been brought about by yourselves. Um, and indeed, Allah is all powerful. Naam Shaykhna. Wakar Allah Subhana fi bayan Sabab Hazimat Yom Hunayn. Wakan al Sahaba to Kathirin. Wahu Dembil Rujub. Usibal Rujub of the Sahaba li Kathratin. Nenum Kanu fil Ada Killa, like if Yom Hunayn. Kanu Kathirin for Usibu bil Rujub. قال سبحانه ويوم حنين إذ أعجبت إذ أعجبتكم كثرتكم فلم تغني عنكم شيئا. And Allah also mentions the Most High, the issue and the uh, the problem that the Sahaba had on the day of Hunain, and this was when the Sahaba there were a great many in this battle, and what was usual was that the Sahaba were few, so. Because there were many on this occasion, they became um, impressed by it and outstanded by it. And they were drawn into the fact that there were a great many in number. And uh, Allah the Most High says that, me that which means, and remember the day of Hunayn. Um, on that day when your great numbers uh, impressed you greatly. We'll be set وبسبب الذنب وبسبب ذنوب الشعوب يسلط الله عليهم حاكما ظالما قال سبحانه وكذلك نولي بعض الظالمين بعضا بما كانوا يكسبون نعم نعم ثابت الله شيخنا and the completion of the previous verse was uh, Allah has supported your met many battlefields, but on the day of Hunayn, when your great numbers impressed you, it availed you nothing, and the earth closed in on you despite its spaciousness. Then you turned away fleeing. Shaykh Hafidhullah, he then went on to say, and also the state of the oppressive, um, the, 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 the sins of the nation, the sins of the people, the masses, this will make the people be led by those who will oppress them and be oppressive. And he mentioned the verse of the Quran where Allah says that which means, and indeed we will put over the people um, oppressors, people of oppression, through the sins that they used to earn. أغرقوا في الدنيا وهم قوم نوح ثم في الآخرة أدخلوا نارا ونعاذ بالله أعوذ بالله and Allah the Most High said about the people of Nuh and indeed they were drowned in the dunya and in the آخرة um, they were put in the fire and that was due to the sins that they used to earn قال تعالى إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم. And Allah the Most High says that which means indeed Allah will not condition will not change the condition of a people until they change their condition themselves. نعم شيخنا. إلى غير ذلك نعم أنا أعذر الشيخ عقيل. أنا لا أبدا شيخنا. إلى غير ذلك من الأدلة الكثيرة. To the other uh, and there are many other verses that have been. إلى غير ذلك من الأدلة نعم. And there are a great many verses that have this. والذنوب نعم والذنوب قسمان ذنوب شبهاتية وذنوب شهوانية. 
And the sins are of two types. The first type are those that are based upon doubts and doubtful matters. And the second are those that are based upon the desires of the individual and the wants of the individual. And the sins that relate to the doubtful matters, these are shirk, associating partners with Allah the Most High, and also bid'ah, innovation. And as for the sins that are based upon the desires, then these are, for example, the desires that the person has, for example, in accumulating wealth through haram means, or through looking at that which is impermissible, and other than this. And by consensus, as was explained by Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy upon him, the sins that are grounded in doubts are greater, graver and more serious than those that are grounded and based in the desires of the individual. And many of us uh, are emotional and we are uh, motivated by our emotions and what we feel. No. Subhanallah. And due to this, we are warned and we have a natural, uh, or we're naturally repelled by the sins that are uh, based upon the desires. These sins, they repel us. As for the sins of the doubtful matters that the Sheikh mentioned, like bid'ah and shirk, these do not repel us. And one of one of the um, one of the sins that are, are that are based upon the doubtful matters is the, the sin of takfir, the sin of wrongly um, taking someone out of, outside the fold of al-Islam, as was the way of the group, the khawarij, and those who followed them, the ikhwan al-Muslimin, and the sururiyah as well, the group, the sururiyah, the Sheikh mentioned. Hafidhukum Allah, Sheikhna. Women at the noob, and from the sins that are based in the doubtful matters is the leaving off of beneficial knowledge and the busying of people with stories that have no basis and stories that are fabricated, as is the case with the Jama'at al-Tabliq.
وحقيقة حالها أنها تضر بابنها وابنتها لأنها قد تنجيهم من المعاصي الشهوانية لكن توقعهم فيما هو أطم وأشد وأعظم وهي المعاصي الشبهاتية والمعذر شيخ عقيل أطلت عليك لأن الجملة واحدة لا 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 أبدا شيخنا حفظكم الله وبارك فيكم and it might be that some ثابكم الله شيخنا it might be that some of the parents the fathers they want for their children their son or their daughter they want for them to be upon Islam and to be practicing the religion of Allah and when this is the case and the children they associate or they they, they join uh, one of the groups like uh, the, the tabligh or the you know, the ikhwan that they are okay with this because through this they will outwardly show the signs that they are practicing the deen and similarly they will through this they will deflect and they will not take part in the sins that are based on desires however they are likely to fall into sins that are even graver than those sins based on desires rather the sins of doubts فابكم الله شيخنا نعم ومن المعاصي الشهوانية الخطيرة معاصي القلوب من الحسد للآخرين والغل والاحتقار لخلق الله والاحتقار للمسلمين نعم and from the sins the very dangerous sins that are the sins of the um the the doubtful matters um are the sins of the heart and these are sins that the individual has um for example where they hold malice for others they're jealous of others or even they may even demean others from the creation of allah and even demean the worshippers of allah these diseases are very very serious فإن كثيرا من الناس إذا سمع المعاصي الشهوانية ينصرف ذهنه إلى النظر للحرام ونحو ذلك ويغفل ويغفل عن معاصي القلوب وهي الأخطر والأعظم. Apologies, this was or the what I mentioned of the heart. These were sins of the desires and not sins of the doubts. These were sins of the desires. The Sheikh Hafidhullah then went on to say that when we talk about the sins of the desires, people often firstly think about uh, things like the physical things, like looking at the haram, etc. But they, do, they are negligent of the fact that there are these desires within the hearts. And these desires within the hearts are even more dangerous than these outward actions. نعم شيخنا فابكم الله. ثم أختم بالتحذير غاية الحذر والتهديد والتنديد غاية التنديد والتحذير من فتنة النساء. And I finish by giving you a warning and it's the utmost warning and the greatest of warning that you save yourselves from the trials and tribulations of women. And when I say this, this is whether it be I'm warning the women against the men or I'm warning the men against the women equally. روى البخاري ومسلم عن أسامة بن زيد أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ما تركت بعدي فتنة أضر على الرجال من النساء ثابكم الله شيخنا reported by Imam Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Usama bin Zayd who said that the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him said indeed I never left any trial or tribulation after me. 
that is more harmful to men than women. Naam, Shaykhna. وروى الإمام مسلم عن أبي سعيد أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن الدنيا حلوة خضرة وإن الله مستخلفكم فيها فينظر كيف تعملون فاتقوا الدنيا واتقوا النساء فإن أول فتنة بني إسرائيل في النساء نعم And it was also reported by Imam Muslim, may Allah have mercy upon him, on the authority of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, who said that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Indeed, the dunya is like a, a sweet, fertile place for you, and Allah the Most High leaves it for you in order to see what you will make of it and what you will do with it. And um beware of the fitna of the women for indeed the people of bani israel their first fitna their first trial and tribulation was that of women أذكر بأمرين الأول إطلاق البصر and the trials and tribulations of the women and when I say this again I emphasize this is whether it's the women to the men or the men to the women either way there are many things there are many dangers but I will warn you against two the first of them is being loose with your eyesight نعم شيخنا قال الله عز وجل قل للمؤمنين يغضوا من أبصارهم ويحفظوا فروجهم ثم وقال بعد وقل للمؤمنات يغضضن من أبصارهن ويحفظن فروجهن and Allah the Most High says um, Allah the Most High says say to the believing men to lower your lower their gazes and to guard their private parts and say to the believing women to lower their gazes and to protect their private parts. Afabakum Allah, Shaykhna. ونوى البخاري عن أبي هريرة أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال العين تزني وزناه النظر. أفضل شيخنا العين تزني وال وزناها النظر. آه. أفابكم الله شيخنا. And it was reported by Imam Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said um, that he, indeed the eye, um, it fornicates. And its fornication is looking. And sight and looking at something, this is the most influential way to the heart. كما بيّن هذا ابن القيم في كتابه إغاثة اللهفان وفي غيره. And this was explained by the Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim in his book إغاثة اللهفان. وهي والنظر سهم من سهام إبليس. سبحان الله. And he says that looking or and sight is an arrow from the arrows of Iblis, of Shaytan. وهو طريق سريع and it's a quick way to fornication. Subhanallah. And for this reason, Allah the Most High said, Say to the believing men, lower your gaze and protect your private parts. And He said to protect the private parts after lowering the gaze, because that. If you don't lower the gaze, it leads to the other thing. And shaitan is um, 
he's motivated and he really endeavors to make the individual look at that which is haram. Ibn Muflih said in his book Al Furu'a. وقال والعين تنظر إلى غير المقدور على خلاف ما هو عليه بمعنى الشيء الذي لا يقدر عليه الإنسان حرام عليه مثلا يحرم عليه أن يأتي مرأة فلان لأن أجنبية أو يحرم لأن نظر لأن أجنبية فالشيطان يزين هذا الأمر سبحان الله Ibn Muflih says in his, his book Al Furur, indeed, Shaitan makes the eye look at the thing that it cannot possess in a way that it's not really, or in a way that is uh, different to its reality, meaning that the individual will look at a woman who is haram for him, He's, she's impermissible for him, i.e. he's not his wife or, um, you know, a strange woman. And he will beautify her to an extent that she isn't actually that beautiful in reality. But he will do this to cause fitna. عود نفسك ألا تنظر إلى امرأة لا في المطار ولا في المضيفات في الطائرة ولا في المطاعم ولا في المتاجر عود نفسك تخاطبها وأنت تنظر يمنة أو يسرى أو أسفل So train yourself not to look at women whether you're on the plane or at the airport or a restaurant or just walking about look left or look right or look down الأمر الثاني اختلاط الرجال بالنساء والنساء بالرجال هذه طامة عظمى ومهلكة كبرى. The second thing is the free mixing of men with women and vice versa. This is a great travesty. قال ابن تيمية في كتابه الاستقامة واختلاط الرجال بالنساء كوضع الحطب عند النار سبحان الله الإمام ابن تيمية رحمه الله he said in his book الاستقامة I being upright he said the free mixing of men and women is like placing um, the, the dried wood onto the fire I it will go up in flames لذا حرم العلماء اختلاط الرجال بالنساء. For this reason, the scholars have declared as impermissible this free mixing. وبهذا تنتهي هذه الكلمة. أسأل الله أن يعلمنا ما ينفعنا وأن ينفعنا بما علمنا. وجزاكم الله خيرا. And with this, I end this word of advice and I ask Allah the Most High to enable us to uh, benefit from that which is being said. Um, and to benefit us with this knowledge. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Allah yajzikum khair ya shaykh. Shakar Allah alaykum jami'an. Shaykh Muhammad alaykum jami'an. Allah yajzikum khair. 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 Allah yajzikum حتى نستفيد في في دراسة التوحيد والعقيدة والأمور المهمة حقيقة هذا شرف اللي أسأل الله يجعلنا وياكم تعاوني على البر والتقوى وسلامي على الإخوة جميعا الشيخ أكيد أكيد س س س س سيبلغ إن شاء الله حفظكم الله شيخنا we 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 thank our sheikh for this for this lovely lecture and we also asked asked him that you know, perhaps he could teach us more and teach us about our religion and return. And he said that that would be an honor, and really the honor is for us. Allah you very much. Wa alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.